One of the big stories this year has been the rape uh, of a woman in an Uber cab. And after that, we saw mass changes across the country in radio taxis and app-based taxis. The transport department here in the capital has just come out with a new set of rules which talks, among other things, it talks about mandatory installation of GPS and a panic button. It also says that companies will have to take complete responsibility for their driver's behavior. Also, that the device, that the GPS should be in constant communication with the control room of the licensees and a lot of other uh, provisions as well. Today on Agenda, we have a special panel uh, we're joined here with Dr. Kalpana Vishwanathan uh, of Jagori. They just did an audit across the city, looking at how the city is safe for women to move around. We also have over here Monica Kumar, of, uh, who's the managing trustee of Manas Foundation. They're working with cab drivers to figure out what can be done to improve safety, what's good for them, what works for everybody. Saurabh Bhardwaj, who was transport minister for a short while with the AAP party, they've made safety of women a major issue in their whole election campaign. And also from Meru Cabs, we have Vikran Khare joining us. And we have, there's a huge campaign on social media also to bring back Uber Cabs. And so we have a lot of users over here who are going to talk to us and talk about why they want that independence back, why they want app-based taxis back. But our first talking point really is, is the transport department's new policy we've seen it it's out there everyone's looking at it is it designed to make people safer and i think Kalpana Vishnathan, this really goes to you because you did the audit you saw what things were like how do you think this makes us safer see really some of it is old wine in a new bottle yeah we've been talking about these things the transport department has been talking about it the government has been talking about it we know about the panic button we know about Many cabs are That's supposed to have GPS, before? it's been talked about in autos. Uh, in cabs also, many cab providers claim they have panic buttons. The whole issue of um, GPS, we, we were led to believe that all these taxis had GPRS functioning completely. So I think some of these are old things, of the verification of the drivers. I mean, this was a system which was supposed to be in place, but the point is that we know how verification takes place, you know, it's not done in a serious way. So therefore the process itself, while the idea is good, yeah. while the, the, the notions are good, which they talked about before also, yeah. it all depends on how it's going to be implemented this time. Is there going to be more seriousness in implementation? Meru cabs is one of those which wasn't affected as much because you weren't taken off the road. It's only the app based ones. But looking at all of this, uh, Uber, of course, said that they didn't want to come on the show. They're not speaking on this just yet. Do you think these are some things which are uh, easily, uh, you know, something that you can implement immediately for yourself and you, and also for app-based companies like Uber? Uh, see, at Meru, uh, we have been using all of these uh, features uh, since we were under uh, radio taxi norms, and we used to have fixed GPS, the panic button on our mobile application. Had a panic button. We have a panic button, which but is called an ice feature. As users, did you all know that there was a panic button? No. So, None of us knew. So they, they are, see, this is a mobile app based feature, which is there applicable on mobile app, and it is available free of cost to every user who books through a mobile app. So uh, these things and plus a fixed GPS that I have spoken about, and who the is police verification. The app uh, panic button. The who panic. Uh, see, this is a this is a feature which is called in case of emergency. So there are two numbers, the secondary numbers which can be given by the consumer themselves. And moment you press that button, there is an alarm which goes off to those particular numbers, uh, pre-assigned numbers, where it will give you the speed of the car, the number of the car, the location of the car. Has anyone and ever used it? Yes, we have a lot of users who are using it right now. Effectively? On a, yes, it is being effectively used. Also, we have a feature like trip tracker feature, where a uh, moment you are there in the car and your car is hired, every 10 minutes automatically a SMS is going to the pre-assigned number where the location of the car, speed of the car is going. So your, uh, your uh, family members, your relatives, they can have a real picture of where you are, are you safe, you're not safe. So those features were there. The only thing like what you said is like uh, police verifications, biometric tests, these have been a uh, process of radio taxis. Meru has been following this for years now. But yes, with this new policy, the aggregators will also come into the same By play. aggregators, you of course means radio, uh, the ones there like are, Ola and Uber. They yes, will also are, be brought they, into they, this. They will now. also be brought so into Bhattwaj, this. Of course, the reality check in all of this is that you were saying how the panic button has been there in autos. 
and of course thank you for giving us that information we didn't know that was there in radio cancer well. the ones in autos haven't been working though uh, look uh, this panic button is a feature of uh, gps based autos and i think a lot of autos have this panic button for i think 2 years 2 years yes but it doesn't Even work Even that we didn't know about it it doesn't too. work you know yeah. it doesn't work it has never been integrated by dims with delhi police even though auto rickshaw drivers are paying a monthly subscription fee to dims even the government of delhi the transport department pays a huge amount to a private company called dims for you know enabling this feature but this feature doesn't work doesn't work doesn't work this company doesn't allow anybody to audit them we while in the government ordered a cag audit for dims the lg didn't allow it so i think it's a welcome change that they are bringing in new regulations but we already have enough regulations in place like ma'am said the problem is that there is no implementing agency which is honest enough to implement them yeah. like we already have a feature of public service badge that means anybody who is driving a public service vehicle is supposed to be verified by the police department yeah however just by paying a sum of 2500 rupees yeah. you can get your psv badge done so and let's not forget who cares? that the driver the uber driver had a certificate saying that he's fine he has the correct you know the clean chit so and that was forged according what to the government has so. done is they have just added one more layer that you know uh, there is one more person or one more party which is responsible which is the aggregator okay so we've been hearing from other people i think you have been speaking to taxi drivers right. from the others point of view yeah. um what do they think about how things have changed post that incident and of yeah. course this is going to be a you know something we are all going to be concerned about see along with making many things mandatory one of the things that uh, uh, government did is they made the gender sensitization training uh, compulsory as a mandate before the fitness for the taxi drivers which they had done for the auto drivers a year back now when we talk to them they say that uh, you know nobody engages with us nobody considers us as human nobody talks to us they've never heard the word gender they don't know i mean what is violence what according to them violence means so i think engaging with them educating them uh, kind of taking them as a partner of bringing in a social change is also important thing from the internal journey that uh, a driver takes But Monica, do, is it easier? Are they open to taking more tests and you know uh, the much more kind of scrutiny? Nobody wants to be in the negative limelight, uh, and if it is a forced change, then there is a reaction to that. Okay. But uh, you know, it depends upon how you take it ahead. Okay. So let's also talk about the fact everyone wants more security, everyone wants greater controls, but everyone also a lot of people also want these app-based uh, radio taxi services back. Uh, and you were telling me they never went away yeah so the companies have been working the app based services working. have been so it wasn't really a whole ban yeah <laughs> okay so i want to ask all of you you've <laughs> all been campaigning to have uber back what is it and then you start off first what is it that really wanted you to get it want uh, uber to come back it was convenient uh, i do have a small car but having a cab service like uber and i am sorry i don't use any of the other cab services why is that <laughs> I have always had uh, mediocre experiences with most of the other cab services and Uber has been amazing since the start really yeah not one bad experience and whenever I did have a substandard experience I immediately got off from the cab uh, put in an email and I got a response by the next day morning saying that they would do something about it but I don't know if they did but anything about it since then you've been using other taxis right I haven't actually no okay. I've been driving and uh Would you say that Monica was it the same with you? I mean, exactly. I mean, Uber has been the most most convenient if I compare with other radio taxis like Ola, Meru. I've tried all of them primarily, even the cheaper ones, even the expensive ones. With Uber, the best part was the uh, cost-effective factor and the, of course, the GPS tracking. Like you know where the driver is reached, oh, yeah, what time is he reaching you? Yeah. Like there was an incident just before this rape case happened. The previous day, I was called an Uber cab, and the driver's GPS stopped working. His phone stopped working, so he I couldn't. Look locate his uh, you know uh, location that where is he reached so he said i cannot come to pick you so i me- i immediately call the uber people and they immediately call the driver back that you're supposed to be at the pickup location asap they i cannot afford to get late for work the whole gps which became a problem exactly. i just want to kind of point out to people some of the they've also released a statement saying what all they've done 
what they are introducing as part of their safety thing because they want to make a bid to come back and that's police verification re-verifying they're saying that they're going to do document verification background checks they also want to have something called incident response team a local and dedicated customer support center Kalpana do you think this is enough See, I think Obviously, that, you know, they have their fans here. Yeah, but. clearly. No, see, <laughs> I, I, I think that we need to strengthen the entire system. You know, I also, I'm, I, I, I'm not here just to vilify you, but I think the entire system of the transport sector in India needs to be made stronger. And one of the things, this thing, this panic button or this uh, independent team which will deal with problems coming up, I think that's deeply problematic. If there is a problem, it must be linked to the police. Right. I don't think there's any option to that. You can't you know? have an independent system. No, because who's yeah. going to, at the end of it, if you're in danger, who do you need? You need the police. Yeah. And you know, all these private security things coming up, who will come and help you? I'm not confident of that system. So I think we need to have it linked to the police and the police response. So all these yeah. uh, panic buttons, they must go to the police. They can also go to some family member. I think that's fine. That's your choice. Sure. Tracking can go to a family member. But the emergency button, at the end of the day, who can reach you fastest? It, it is our 100 be. number. Let's not, let's not deny that. Well, uh, there's no, there's, I mean, it can be strengthened. It can be improved, the 100 number. But at this point, this is the system that's functioning. We need to strengthen that, not set up other private call centers which will respond to the emergency treatment. I don't think that's a solution at all. Okay, that's very interesting. So immediately, these things that they've, they're not back yet officially, but uh, they have put in these things. Uh, that's something I hope that policy makers are listening to what you're saying and they take that into account. I just want to ask Vikram Thare, some of the things that they've said, some of the measures that they've said, we obviously seen how the police verification was being forged or however it was, but they were managing to get through the system. How are all of you ensuring that the right kind of driver that obviously not a sex offender like we saw in the uber case was becoming a driver See, how are there, you ensuring uh, that there are certain measures that we do so one is definitely police uh, verification and we a lot we do, do depend on the system and uh, in, in this what country what if it gets you a verification from last year is there a is there a system to have it done every year? So uh, there's a re-verification process for uh, the police verifications of all drivers. Plus also we have got a third party background check for all drivers. So we do it at their uh, permanent address, at their current address, because a lot of migrant drivers are here in Delhi. So we do, uh, we do and meet their neighbors. Migrant drivers. In the classes that uh, go on, at least 70 to 80 percent say they are migrants. And migrants. they are living without okay. their families. Yes. So, okay. So we, have, we have a verification process at their native place also where the third party agency goes and does that. Yeah. So all those measures are taken care of. Plus also we have a four day long training for drivers which includes uh, uh, sensitization on gender uh, uh, etiquettes, how to behave with female shoppers. Yeah. Also we have got refresher trainings, corrective yeah. trainings. These are some measures through so, which we so keep a control. Because you had, the, you know, behind the scenes, you were the transport minister. What do you think is the biggest problem uh, and the kind of weakness which still hasn't been sorted out in the transport department? Uh, in government in general and transport department in particular, uh, they are totally corrupt. They are so corrupt that you cannot depend on any process. You make a process and it's a recipe of you know earning more money, minting more money. Like now you have brought aggregators into this regulation so now the transport department has got another client to mint money. Okay, so you go there and you. So that enjoy sounds like the a really music. pessimistic note, but we'll just take a short break. When we come back, more questions and perhaps, despite the pessimism, what can we, what can we look forward to? How fixes? We look for fixes. Stay with us.